Hey class, quick video here on the different types of market segmentation. Okay, remember market segmentation, we're breaking down the market into smaller groups and not just any small groups. These small groups, they, they share common characteristics with one another. So here we're gonna look at the four different ways that we can sort of group characteristics to create our market segments. Okay, the first one, demographics. Second, geographics. Three, psychographics four behavioral characteristics. So as we move through, we're going to we're going to look at each of these four different ways and some examples for each. So the first um, type of market segmentation is demographics. Okay, so we can see here that demographics are statistics that describe a population in terms of personal characteristics, such as age, gender, income, marital status, ethnicity, education and occupation. Okay, the, the key thing with demographics are their statistics, okay? They, they're black and white. There's really no debating. There's no middle ground with a demographic. It just is what it is. Okay, so some common ones, age, gender, income, marital status, ethnicity, education, occupation. If we take demographics and we apply it to LeBron James, somebody that I think most of us are familiar with, we can quickly, you know, create a... Uh, a list of information about LeBron James, okay, to acquire his demographics. So if we say LeBron James' age, well, he's 35, gender, male, income. In 2020, LeBron James made $37.4 million. So pretty hefty income there. Marital status, he's married. African-American is an ethnicity. Education, high school, okay, LeBron graduated high school. And then occupation, he's an NBA player. Okay, so these are examples of demographics. They're statistics, okay? Now, of the demographics that we just went through, what do we think is the most important from a marketing perspective? Well, I can tell you that it's income, okay? Companies care how much money somebody makes because if somebody isn't making enough money to afford their products, then the company doesn't really care about marketing to them. Okay, they want to make sure that people can afford the products that they're offering. Okay, because if you can't afford it, you're not even in the market for it. Remember our definition of a market. Okay, so why is income important to marketers? Well, we just said that you need to have enough money to be able to afford their product, but it does go a little bit deeper than that. Okay, these the marketers they need to know how much consumers can spend on different products to help determine the product price and to guide their marketing campaigns. Okay, so income is very important from a marketing perspective. So what I wanna introduce now are two very similar terms, okay? They're very similar and students often get them mixed up. So I want you to carefully review these. Okay, the first is disposable income. Disposable income means the money left over after taxes are taken out. Okay, you may or may not have heard the, the common saying that the only thing in life that's guaranteed are death and taxes. You're always going to have taxes taken out of your paycheck. Okay, so this is the money that you have to dispose of, okay, or to spend after those taxes are taken out. So what are the things that we generally use our money for first? Okay, we need to use our money or our disposable income to meet our needs. Okay, like our housing, we need to have a place to live electric, water, the utilities for the house, to buy food, to buy clothes. Okay, that's where our disposable income goes and our disposable income is what we have left over after taxes are paid. All right, so let's compare disposable income to discretionary income. You can see they sound sort of the same, okay? They, but they're different. Discretionary income is money left over after the basic necessities, okay, remember housing, electric, food, those types of things, after those things are taken care of and paid for. Okay, discretionary income is what we can use to buy our wants or the things that we don't necessarily need, but we would like to have it. Okay, so some examples here might be designer purses, AirPods, jewelry. Okay, those are things that we want. We don't need any of those things to survive, okay, but we want them. So depending on what product a company is selling, that's gonna determine whether or not they're interested in somebody's disposable income or their discretionary income. We can see that if we're in the market, like if we sell Louis Vuitton purses, like we see right here, we really don't care how much disposable income people have. We wanna know how much income do they have after they've met those basic needs because 
you know, the average person isn't going to put their needs ahead of a designer purse. They're going to need to make sure that they have, you know, housing, food, those types of things before they go out and spend a bunch of money on a Louis Vuitton purse. Okay, so make sure that you carefully review and you have a good understanding of the difference between disposable and discretionary income. Okay, so the second way that we can segment a market is by geographics. Now, geographics means that we're segmenting, segmenting that market based on where people live. So think of geography, you know, when people think of geography, they think of a map. Okay, kind of take that and apply it to geographics based upon where people live, okay, or location. So some examples of geographics, okay? Large US cities, they tend to have higher ethnic diversity, okay? So that's a greater focus for ethnic food companies. I'm gonna probably be more successful if I'm, you know, selling ethnic foods where, you know, there's a larger concentrations of people with that ethnicity. I, I wouldn't wanna do it, I wouldn't wanna put all my time and effort into a geographic area where there's nobody of that ethnicity. Okay, states with colder climates, there's going to be a greater focus for companies if you're selling snowblowers. Why would I take time to try to promote my snowblowers in the middle of Arizona where it never snows? Okay, or, the, or Florida. It doesn't make much sense. Okay, areas with large Spanish-speaking population. You might have customized commercials in Spanish in those areas. Okay, because you know there's enough people in that area where, you know, running a commercial in Spanish is, you know, worth your money. Political views of American regions, okay? There's gonna be greater political focus for specific candidates. We see that this year for certain. Pennsylvania is a key swing state in the general election, okay? You're seeing advertisements on TV all the time. Okay, so th these are examples of how where somebody lives determines what sort of marketing mix they're gonna receive from different companies. Okay, it's important to point out here too that geographics is closely tied with demographics, okay? Because people living in the same geographic area, oftentimes they share similar demographics, okay? People tend to make similar amounts of money, you know, where they live, uh, you know, same way with ethnicity. Um, you know, there's, there's ties between geography and demographics. That's the main point to remember here. Now, psychographics, okay, this is when we're gonna segment the market based upon similar lifestyles and similar values. Okay, so some examples might be, what activities do you participate in? Like, what sports do you do? What are your hobbies? Okay, people that, you know, um, go play baseball in the evenings, they're gonna receive a different mix of, uh, or a different marketing mix from, you know, baseball companies than uh, people that don't play baseball attitudes, healthy eating, working out, okay, personality and values, whether or not you go to church, okay, or do you care for children in the home? Okay, these are lifestyles and values. These are things that companies will key in on to determine what marketing mix they're going to use to try to, you know, reach the people that are most likely to buy their product. So now our fourth way of segmenting a market is behavioral characteristics. Okay, behavioral characteristics means what are your shopping behaviors? Okay, how, what, what sort of behaviors do you have when it comes to shopping for different types of products? Okay, so some examples here. Some people, they really value luxury brands. They're willing to pay a premium for that luxury brand. Okay, that's a shopping behavior. Okay, if we look at it by age. Now, age is a demographic, but the behavioral characteristic, okay, is how much people of that age actually spend. If we look at the second bullet point here, average teenager, that's a demographic age, spends less than $50 a month on entertainment. That's an example of a shopping behavior or a behavioral characteristic. Okay, teenage girls, they spend 15% more than boys on music. Once again, we're looking at a demographic here of teenage girls, but because we're, we're tying the demographic into a shopping behavior, it becomes a behavioral characteristic. Okay, an interesting fact, the general rule is known as the 80-20 rule. Okay, what the 80-20 rule means that 80% of a company's sales are usually generated by 20% of its customers. Okay, that shows how, you know, your core base of customers is really where you're gonna be getting a lot of your money to run your business. That's why it's important 
to properly segment the market and determine who your target market is and deliver the right mix, the right marketing mix to those customers to keep them happy because they're the ones that are driving the majority of your sales. Okay, so in review, this is the four types of ways to segment a market. We had demographics, okay, which is statistics like age, marital status, income. We have geographics where we're segmenting the market based upon where people live. We have psychographics where we're looking at people's lifestyles and values to segment a market. And then finally, we had behavioral characteristics where we're segmenting that market based upon people's shopping behaviors.